Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And we are in the new patch, so 10.1 has arrived. Minor patch with a few small changes, mainly to uh, Milva and of course the King of Beggars, slight adjustment there as well. But other than that, just yeah, a few minor changes. I think we got a little bit of a buff to hand boosting and some very interesting change to uh, spear tip which is also interesting in monsters but other than that the game pretty much is still the same which means that all my deck ideas i had previously are still valid so that's uh, good for me because uh, i want to actually dive into northern realms a little bit deeper northern realms has gotten the short end of the stick lately but uh, i think we can make some gorgeous decks with what we already have so today we're going to be taking a look at the cooldown kings now the cooldown kings actually referred to the two new cards in northern realms from the previous month so king henselt and king radovit the fifth meaning that we have both of them in our decks i will be talking about them in a minute but the cooldown kings deck is a stockpile deck which has been a while as well that combines the power of siege with a lot of cooldown related units and of course henselt and radovit will be helping out with that uh, the entire decklist is available on the Play Gwent website in the description down below, so the link is right there. So you can export this deck to your own game, play around with it, see if it works for you, and provide me with a little bit of feedback if you can. Don't forget to also upvote it there, because uh, every little bit helps. Now with that said, we're going to be going through each and every single card of this decklist. Um, if you're not interested in that, you know what all these cards do, then we can head straight into the example matches. You can do that using the timeline down below. And uh, I'll see you guys there. But for anybody still here, let's go through the card. This deck is a devotion deck, uh, mainly because of a few cool bronzes. The Karak Marine is one of those. Three power for four provisions and on devotion you have an order ability with zeal where you boost an allied unit by four, which is uh, pretty, pretty good. So you can always keep your units alive if you uh, play this guy. Yeah, we have a double get when revenant. I think this card can be swapped out for something else, but since we're doing so much damage and so many separate damage things, the get ready revenant will usually have a one point target to kill and then just duplicate itself. Uh, it is of course a worse card in a shorter round, but still it is uh, pretty good if you can get this going in a longer round. Then the Sintrian Envoy is a uh, consistency card, so 4 power for 4 provisions formation. So meaning that if you put her on the melee row, you get zeal. If you put it on the ranged row, you get an extra point. And her order ability means that you look at the three, at three random cards from your deck and then you move one to the top of your deck. Um, be careful not to do this when you're playing against Nilfgaard. Aside from, of course, you can do it if you want to put your bad cards up top. But uh, Nilfgaard is uh, yeah, going into mill and um, cloaking uh, these days. So uh, I have to be careful about that. Then a double siege support for power for four provisions on the ploy. You either reduce the cooldown of an allied unit by one or you boost an allied unit by one instead. Um, he also has an order ability where you give an allied unit zeal. And in this deck that is really important because uh, we do use some pretty powerful cards that have a not zealed order ability. And since we're not using inspired zeal this time, we need to have other cards that can provide zeal to uh, those cards, like Raffert's Vengeance. Then we have a double winch, you boost an allied unit by 5 and then reduce its cooldown by 3, which of course works out because we have so many cooldown cards. But of course this also works very well with Hanselt, as you'll see in a minute. Then of course the double reinforced ballista, 3 power and 1 armor for five provisions on order you damage a unit by one this ability has a cooldown of one so our first cooldown ability also has formation and all resupplies so if you play a warfare card like the winch we just saw you also reduce the cooldown by one basically re-enabling the ability very powerful damage engine card that can uh, rack up some serious points if left unanswered. Then we have a double Carabalista, mainly for Henselt support. So 5 power for 5 provisions and on deploy if you are between 2 soldiers you gain 2 armor. And on order if you're on the ranged row you damage an enemy unit by 2 with a cooldown of 3. This card is a bit underpowered for what it does um, based on the provisions it also has. But uh, yeah, with the uh, crew ability and the cooldown is very high for what it does because uh, basically the reinforced ballista is way better than this but we need crew uh, abilities with cooldown so this just functions really really well now we have one Karak frigate i think it's one it is one 
So one Karak Frigate, four power for uh, six provisions with one armor and on order you spawn a volunteer on this row. So that functions as a soldier. And if you are in crew, so if there's a soldier on both uh, ends of this card, you also refresh this ability at the end of your turn. It sadly doesn't work with cooldown, that would have been even better. But uh, very cool engine card regardless, it gives you a lot of soldiers that you can use for your crew abilities. And we have one uh, lock card to Margarita low on deal, 6 power for 6 provisions, has zeal on her order ability where you just lock an enemy unit, so in case you just really need to uh, take out something that uh, has a very annoying ability. Next up we have another Warfare card, Reinforcement spawn and play a base copy of a Bronze Allied unit. Usually we will be going for the Reinforced Ballista, just to get a single other one on the field. Um, but yeah, all the other uh, Bronze cards we just talked about can also function as a target for this. Then we use a card that we don't often use, but again, since we use a few Order related abilities that really would love Zeal, we also include Vest, so 5 power for 7 provisions, on deploy you damage an enemy unit by 2, giving you your 7 points. But on order, you also give an allied unit zeal. Uh, she doesn't have zeal herself, which is obvious, because otherwise, I mean, that wouldn't really matter all that much. And she also has cooldown for three turns, where she can, of course, give another unit zeal after three turns. Then we have John Natalis, a uh, tutor card for our warfare cards. So two power and eight provisions on deploy. If you put him on the melee row, you play a warfare card from your deck. And he also functions as a soldier for your crew abilities. So we're going to be usually using John uh, to get Amphibious Assault out of the deck. Now we have Black Ryla. Uh, Black Ryla, also 5 power for 8 provisions this time, has a non-sealed order ability on the melee row where she damages a unit by 1. If she is boosted, you damage by 2 instead, and she has a cooldown of 1. So functions as a soldier and as a cooldown unit with a uh, lot of damage potential if she remains unanswered. But still... Bit of a tricky card to use, but uh, she can definitely come in handy if you have a seal uh, left. And then, of course, the better card, uh, Full Test Pride, 5 power and 1 armor for 8 provisions. Has zeal, um, has an order ability where he damages an enemy unit by 2 and the units adjacent to it by 1. So that means you basically, if you can hit this correctly, you also already have 9 points. Um, with a cooldown of 4, but if you put him in between two soldiers, the cooldown will be 2. So at the end of the cooldown, if you use the ability, the cooldown is always decided based on the crew or not. Um, very powerful card. Probably your strongest engine card aside from Raffert's Vengeance. Um, so be careful not to waste this card too soon. And then of course we have Raffert's Vengeance. 5 power for 10 provisions. Order, play a bronze unit from your hand and then draw a card with a 5 turn cooldown. If you're in crew, then whenever you play a unit next to this card, you damage a random enemy unit by 2 as well. And mages also contribute to this card's crew ability. So a uh, very powerful card that basically thins out your bronzes. But in this deck, you need to be careful that you have zeal on this card or that you can protect it enough. Because then we have King Radovit the fifth, six power for 10 provisions and on the ploy, if the base version of your leader ability has more than one charge, which we have, you give it an additional charge and on order you do exactly the same. So basically allowing our leader ability stockpile to have five charges instead of three. Uh, don't underestimate this card. This is, um, I think in its base, since stockpile also gives you a volunteer, it's at least 10 points if you manage to trigger the uh, order ability but of course if you don't use the order ability in the, the round that you use Radovid in this is basically carryover making this card the best carryover card for uh, Northern Realm so no um, we, we really don't need uh, the mushy truffle for that because um, yeah because those uh, those cooldown ticks uh, will usually be a lot more points than just the two points from the volunteers as you'll see soon enough now because those cards are animated it doesn't bring to attention the fact that we're just torturing sorceresses with this with this deck so here we're torturing philippa here we're torturing sabrina which is yeah not the most positive message that can be sent with a deck like this but uh king hansel three power and one armor for 13 provisions and has a uh, deploy ability where he plays a crew unit from your deck. So Raffid's Vengeance also counts as a crew unit. So basically the only tutor to get a Raffid's Vengeance out of the deck right now. And uh, whenever an adjacent unit's cooldown decreases, boost yourself by the same amount. This is a bit trickier. Uh, what this means is that the crew unit that you've um, deployed from your deck will not have its cooldown decreased just yet because it will not have its order ability active. Uh, unless you zeal it, of course. 
So it takes two turns for King Hansel to actually start gathering points if you didn't already have a unit on the field. Also keep in mind that cooldown only reduces at the beginning of your turn. So even if you would have two active uh, cooldown cards on the field, Hanselt will not boost until the start of your next turn. So that four power that he has, well, three power and one armor, is very, very vulnerable. Um, so that means that you somehow need to protect him with either another order ability um, or something like that, because this card is pretty vulnerable. But if he gets going, this card is really powerful as well, because um, with your leader ability, that means that you can basically add another two points on all of your cooldowns, because um, you reduce the cooldowns of the cards next to him, he boosts himself by two, and so on and so forth. So if you have five charges left, that's just straight up ten points on King Hanseld. Now we have Amphibious Assault for the consistency, so the Echo card where you play a Northern Realms unit from your deck with a provision cost of 9 or less, and you boost it by 1 for each provision below the limit. Uh, usually going to be used to either get some of our lower tier bronzes out of the deck, or of course false test Pride, which is also a really good card. And then of course Siege, the scenario card where you progress whenever you play a Siege engine. The first one is a reinforced Trebuchet. At the range row, you uh, damage a random unit, enemy unit on the range row by one. Unless it's screwed, then it damages wherever. Next one is the Battering Ram, where you move back and forth. So it also has cooldown, which is of course good for us. Um, where you, if you're on the range row, you move to the melee row and damage the highest enemy by three. If you're on the melee row, you move back to the range row without doing anything else. And the final card is Bombardment, where you split four damage randomly between all enemy units and you increase the damage by one for each siege engine you control. Now that I did the entire explanation, I should probably get a few cards that actually defend Hansel a bit better. Um, but before we do that, we also have Engineering Solution as our stratagem, boost another unit by four and give it a shield. And then of course our leader ability is Stockpile. That leader ability has changed a bit since it was first introduced. So before this, it had the ability to give a unit an extra charge every two turns. Now this has changed to spawn a volunteer on an allied row, so two power soldier, and then reduce the cooldown of all Northern Realms units in that row by one, and you can do this three times. Meaning that if you have at least two, for example, two cooldown units on that row, you have 12 points. Um, depending on the ability, that can of course be even more. So I usually don't do this, but it did make me realize that there's no real protection for King Hanselt right now. Um, so I've added Donimir and removed Black Rayla, and then I've removed one of the Carabalista and swapped it out for um, the Rat of its Royal Guard as well. Um, and got rid of one of the Kedwani Revenants in return. So that's basically what I've done here. So that should give us the protection with Donimir. Donimir is also a good uh, card that we can tutor with Amphibious Assault, so that kind of works out. And of course, he also counts as a soldier, so let's try this out instead. It's slightly different from the deck that I've been practicing with, but uh, I mean, that's a good way to show you how I set up these decks. So just try things out and just realize that there might be a slight gap in this deck at the moment. So uh, let's try this thing out. So the game was actually uh, nice enough to indicate that I'm uh, missing a single card and I kind of missed that. Um, another card that's really good for the 4 provision slot is of course Bombardment. Um, we are not dealing with that many um, siege engines but it is a little bit. Um, I could also swap out the Kedwani Revenant for a siege ladder which is probably a more consistent option. So yeah, let's get that out and get a Siege Ladder in, which means that we'll also be uh, boosting a unit by two for crew. So we can move an allied unit to the other row, which is gonna sometimes come in handy to reposition certain units. Um, so yeah, there we go, new list, and that's gonna be the list that will be on the Playground website as well. So slight, slight adjustment there. So first example match of the day against pirates. I hate pirates. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna. I really have, have just gotten a, a distaste for uh, for pirates. Um, okay, not the greatest starting hands. Uh, let's get rid of that crew. Uh, well, the siege ladder uh, first and foremost. We are starting, so the sentry and envoy is a bit of a risk. Could start with the Karak frigate to just get a little bit of damage out of the way. Um, and I think the Caraballista might not be that interesting right now. Okay, reference Vengeance, that is really good. But I need, do need to be able to get... Um, hmm. 
I do need to be able to get the zeal on it. Or not. It's not necessary. I'm gonna start out with Rafid's Vengeance. It's gonna be all or nothing, basically. Uh, and I can put that on the front row. And I'm gonna shield it immediately. So if there's... I mean, if there's like a... Um, a Karate Heatwave, then I won't get anything out of that, but then at least the Karate Heatwave is gone. Um, there's a lot of damage in that deck as well, so this might be problematic. Okay, so the Uncreed Longship comes down, which is fine by me. Um, what we then do is of course gonna play into the hand of our opponent. Our opponent is gonna be very good at playing these, um, these damaging cards that will, uh, and every time we take damage, uh, all of their cards will be getting armor. So what we do with the um, Rafid's Vengeance is what we also did in Super Salsa, Super Siege Salsa. Uh, so we click Rafid's Vengeance, take the Siege Support, we draw Dolomir, which is actually pretty good, and then put the Siege Support in the front, which will allow the Rafid's Vengeance to already go down one bit of cooldown. Um, and then we can actually put down the Karak Marine right next to it, damaging the um yeah the uncreate longship and then we use the boost on the siege support there we go so that did give our opponent already two pieces of armor on all units there we go so the um the uncreate um marauder is it right no raider uh, is already doing that um next up the karak frigate actually has armor so we can use winch to put that on Rafid's Vengeance, going to 14, and then we can use Rafid's Vengeance again using the Karak Frigate right over here, and we can um, actually zeal that Karak Frigate and give ourselves another volunteer. There we go. So now that is going to be the prime target for our opponent, I know that, um, but at least we got a few points out of that beforehand. And I mean, Rafid's Vengeance is still alive. What I usually want to try and do is keep the cooldown units until the very end. Our opponent has a lot of damaging cards, so the chances that everything is going to stay alive are probably very slim. Uh, but regardless, hmm, that's a weird choice. Unless, of course, we now get a gutting slap or skewer at all. Fair enough, there we go. There goes the ship. Um, that is fine, actually. Um, there are not that many warfare cards in my deck still. There is another winch. Uh, we only have one siege engine on the board right now, but I do want to keep one as well. We also have amphibious assault, which I could use to get another. Could go on another Karak Marine, or we just give it to Radovitz Royal Guards to give ourselves a little bit of armor. Um, yeah, let's do that. So, um, Radovitz Royal Guards are right over here. And that gives us two more damage, but that went on the armor, so uh, let's just protect the... You know what? I'm not going to protect anything just yet. Let's just hold off. And then next up we can use John Natalis, get another winch out of the deck, and then use Rafford's Vengeance again. Ah, okay, we get a pass now. Okay, fair enough. Now, with a deck like that, I usually want to try my luck and just go for it. The reason for that is, of course, that our opponent has benefits the longer the stakes. So the more turns we take, the more armor they get, and we get Hanseled, which is good. I would also love <laughs> Radovit, for example. That's also really good, by the way, because that's basically carryover, as I said before. Um, we have Amphibious Assault in hand. I'm gonna get rid of reinforcements. I can get reinforcements with Chom Natalis and we really need Siege. We don't get Siege. Okay. Then I'm gonna just use Radovit as a carryover card. And then maybe something... I could actually use the Sentry and Envoy here. Uh, no, wait. So I can use Radovit first, because I have two cards in this round. So I can use Radovit first. That might actually pull some leader ability charges here. No, we gotta keep that Scorpion in the function. So that takes care of that carryover. And then we use the Centrion Envoy in the front row. So we can already put one card up top. And of course, that's gonna be Siege. That is really good for consistency. And that's why that card is in there. And then we get the Hate Maze Kjold, of course, getting rid of some extra cards in their hands. But that is perfect. 
So now we get seven cards and we have a last say. Last say is not going to matter that much, uh, but at least we'll be able to set up our siege engines properly here. And of course we get damaged once more, meaning that uh, I don't know if actually Giga Scorpion Decoction triggers that, because we go to damage but we die in the same ability. So really curious if that actually works that way. Um, we get some nice cards. I do need to be careful that I still have a crew unit um, in deck, and I still have for now. There's two in there for, uh, for Hanselt. We also need two siege engines, of which I only have two right now. Um, okay, we get the siege ladder, and then we get Margarita, okay. So Margarita I can actually use to lock Krach. Because Krach is coming. I know Krach is coming. It's the most annoying card in that deck. So if I can lock it, usually they don't have a Purify to take that away again. If there's a defender in front of that, I can't basically do anything against that, but... Um, Okay, we get a um, deciding, which might be a raiding fleet then. Oh no, we get Croc, of course, because you need that. Uh, but Croc naked on the field, which means that we have Margarita to lock it. Um, so that's exactly why she's in there. Um, just the, the one bit of removal that is pretty direct. And next up, I think I'm going to start with Donimir. Um, then put Siege behind that and start whacking away. Um... The longer we wait for to do that, the, the worse it's going to get. So now we get Coral. Coral is going to get a lot more of extra damage because I can't really do anything against that. Um, so, Donimir in the back. I usually go for the back because that gives the uh, reinforced uh, Ballista an extra point, which can't make the difference here. Especially with all the damage going around. And that all goes on Margarita, so that was actually pretty good. That was really good. Um, so now I can put uh, Siege on the back row. There we go. We get the uh, reinforced Trebuchet. I was going to say Ballista, but that's the same mistake I made in the uh, in the other video. And now we need to start using some, uh, some, cr some crew. Some crew. So I can actually crew right now, because Donami actually counts as a soldier. So that means that the next card I'm going to play is Hanselt into... Um, Hanselt into... Foltest Sprite, which might seem a bit weird, but... There we go, so Hanselt gets a crew card, and that crew card is Foltest Sprite. In between Donimir and Hanselt himself, and then I... That's actually one of the only cooldown cards that has a sealed ability, unless of course you go for Reinforced Ballista. Uh, so I am going to put that on the Tweer Sock Skirmisher over there, and that gives us three points in one go. And the Trebuchet is also going, and of course now they want to take out that Defender. Um, that's going to be six. That's not enough for Gutting Slash, but it is enough for Rupture. That is not too bad, actually. Um, I still have... Yeah, so Amphibious Assault. No, I'm gonna hold off on Amphibious Assault because the Reinforced Ballista also triggers on um, Warfare cards. So, Reinforced Ballista over here. Um, then the Bombardment that we get from over there. Yeah, the Battering Ram isn't gonna do much, so I'm gonna keep that there for now. And then I'm gonna use our Leader Ability once. Just to get um, Voltest Sprite already going into the next bit. Um, let's put that on Croc. Um, battering Ram... Yeah, I'm gonna keep Battering Ram alive for now. So Donimir now dies, but we still have the two turns of cooldown. And there's a lot of vulnerable cards on the board right now. Okay, we have four Siege Engines, which probably will be only two or three after this turn. And now we get the Uncreate Raiders, which don't get their next bit of damage just yet. Yeah, it is high time that I use the Reinforced Ballista now. Um, so, Reinforced Ballista over here, because I need to kill that thing. Um, then I think it's probably best to use Fess first. Wait, I can also Reinforcement, yeah. No, Fess first. 
Because Vest gives us another soldier. Uh, I'm going to use this already as well. Then use Stockpile again. So that reduces the cooldown of those two cards. Another hit over there. And then I can kill Holger Blackhand with the Foltest Sprite. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to get another hit there. And of course, the um, that one goes down. Okay. We're still soldiered up. Now, I really need... Um, yeah, I can just keep hitting stuff here. I'm going to put that over there. Um, then get Amphibious Assault into another Reinforced Ballista, this time at the front row. So I have another uh, damage tick. I'm not going to kill Croc, because um, Croc can be resurrected, so I really want to avoid that. So I'm just going to keep ticking those down. I can use our leader ability once more. That's why I'm not putting them on the back row anymore. And then use Reinforced Ballista. And... Full Test Sprite. There we go. So that means that right now it doesn't look like we're going to get our Car Ballista properly. Because I'm, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. But we still have a few other tricks up our sleeve. Because uh, John Natalis can still get reinforcements out. We have two... Tra 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 eh, ballistas. <laughs> No, so that's 10 damage on... Ooh, that was probably not a good choice, buddy. That was definitely not a good choice. Um, so John Natal is on the... F no, wait, wait. I first need to use the Reinforced Ballista. First need to use the Reinforced Ballista. Um, John Natal is on the front row with reinforcements. So that's a Warfare card, so that triggers our Reinforced Ballista again. And then I can put that Reinforced Ballista in the front. And then just um, damage the Terror of the Seas. Damage the Terror of the Seas. Use the Leader Ability once more. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off because I know, of course, Morgvark is still in there. And Morgvark will take down most of... Um... Hmm. Okay, yeah, there we go. Morgvark was going to take down most of the points on Henselt, so if I could wait by giving more more points to Henselt, that would be better. But uh, there we go, we beat Pirates. I was really happy with that. Our uh, streak of siege engines just uh, got the better of Skellige there. Really happy, because that's a really tough matchup as well. And next up, we have more Skellige. So Reckless Flurry. Um, that might actually work hmm, more in our favor, I don't know. There could be a lot worse things in there. Um, we do start again, which is good. We have double siege support. Sintrin Envoy probably can't hurt. Winch either. I'm gonna get rid of Bombardment for now. And we got Joel Natale, so that's actually perfect. So I think I might actually get rid of the Sintrin Envoy. Um, Karak Marine is always better, so this seems to be A-OK. -okay. Um, so yeah, let's finish redrawing and we'll see if we can get Rapid's Vengeance off this time. But Reckless Flurry usually has a lot more tools to take out cards. So if I use this and then shield it, it's just not enough to take out with all Reckless Flurry charges. But of course there's more than just Reckless Flurry to this deck. Um, if one charge hits, that's up to seven. Seven is not easily destroyed either. So I'm guessing it's going to be Karate Heatwave if they want to take it out. Let's take down the, the snow. Oh, lock. Okay, I can't purify with this deck. So that is just as effective. Okay. Annoying? But not that annoying. Um, I'm going to go with Vess next. Because Vess's main purpose is to either trigger... If we wouldn't have started, I would have started with Vess. Because Vess can give out zeal. Um, if I can give out Zeal to Radovid next, then we have our five charges to start with, which is already good. Uh, and we get just Bleeding on the card, which is fine. Sad that I don't have a Purify option, but Purify options aside from, um, I think it's Drake Bondu, right? No, not Drake Bondu, Kutkodak. Kutkodak. Um... Yeah, there are no real options to actually purify in Northern Realms if you want to stay Devotion, then we want to stay Devotion. So, Radovid, 
as I just said, Radovit is the perfect carryover card, so I'm gonna put Radovit down. Uh, so that gives us an extra charge, and then we give him zeal and use another extra charge. So the most important thing here would normally be to, of course, keep round one in check. But uh, with that, that was actually enough to not give us round one. Hmm. I could use Natalis to get the Karak Frigate out. I think that's probably the better option. Um, so let's put Natalis over here and get the Amphibious Assault into the Karak Frigate. So the Karak Frigate will then start generating um, more volunteers and we just put 9 points on the board as well. Then we get Banish on and the Amphibious Assault, so that is sad, but not too bad, because I feel like I still have a good uh, set of cards in my hand here. Uh, we can put the correct Frigate yeah, one further, and then we can use the boost from the Siege Support, which is now useless otherwise, onto the correct Frigate as well, so 8 points with 1 armor. Starting to get really hard to destroy there. Chrome Messenger is going to be 8. So that is that. They're not going to be triggering the rain right now. And that's actually equal. That is actually equal. Okay. But I still have the upper hand here. Because I have the engine capabilities. Um, so correct Marine onto uh, John Natalis. And then get us another volunteer. That's another 9 points. And remember we have a lot of carryover right now with the leader ability. And there we go. We have the pass. I thought so. Um, so let's end it right there. I think I'm gonna try and go for a long round, of course, with our siege engines. Uh, the longer that goes around, the more chances we'll get of getting, first and foremost, the better hands, because right now it's not that good. Volta Sprite is really good. Um, siege supports might actually be better than the Caraballista, but we need two siege engines to trigger siege. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of the siege support and board bombardment is also good. But not required. So I think I'm going to even get rid of Bombardment here. We get the Sentry and Envoy. Sadly, no carryover with the Sentry and Envoy this time. So let's just pass. And uh, destroy the uh, the Snowman in the meantime. There we go. I love this this map. And there we go on, on Aeromancy. So they get uh, whatever card they want. Out of the deck, Crow Mother is also going to come in, be coming back. So that's Crow Mother. There's a Sunset Wonder going around there as well. And on Aeromancy is going to come back on top of all of that. So they have a very good hand right now. We get a reinforced Ballista. I was really trying not to say trebuchet there. We get the... Oof. We're not gonna get Hanseled, are we? The hand is not ideal. It's also not super bad. Oof. <laughs> I mean, we have Donamir, Hanseled, and reinforcements in the deck, so... And our second Ballista. <laughs> not, not ideal, I should I would say. And there's a lot of reckless flurry charges there, so if I can set up a soldier loop, which I should be able to. But it's really annoying that we don't have hand salt right now. We get mushy truffle, that's just um the mermaids, the little hafroos. There we go. So that's I mean I say it's just the little mermaids, but it's uh six points and another six points from the mushy truffle itself. Um, we do still have a lock. We have quite a few good cards here. Um, do I want to siege in the start? I don't think so. I'm just going to put down Radovitz Royal Guards as a bit of a starting card. This, of course, is a good target to just getting Slash, but at least I'm getting rid of most of the uh, removal options here. Brockfar Hunter. Brockfar Hunter. And there we get the leader ability charge. Okay, I can take out the Brockfar Hunter, actually. Because now I can play Siege, but... There's gonna be Koyalti in there, isn't there? That's gonna be Koyalti. Oh, we really, really have a really bad hand here. I'm almost tempted to use our leader ability charges. Yeah, but this is gonna be Koyalti, so... We can use the leader ability charges to get two volunteers on the row and then get the crew abilities going, but this is a really tough spot at the moment. Um, there's not really something we can do to circumvent this. Okay. And we get the leader ability charge again. 
So Brockfire Hunter triggers on beasts, and for some reason, little Hofgus are still beasts. Um, I think... So most of our cooldown units will be in the back. So I'm going to be using the reinforced ballista in the back here as well. I guess there's two more units, but I'm guessing there's going to be more removal where that came from. So there we go, one bit of rain. So that's at least two damage. And then depending on what our opponent can do, it probably takes out the... Um, Oof, yeah. Giga Scorpion Decoction. And that takes out the reinforced trebuchet. Um, there's not much else I can do. Um, I could put down the Caraballista now, but it doesn't get zeal. I might as well, because otherwise that, that uh, battering ram is going to die anyway. So let's put that down over here. And that at least gets us a bombardment. Getting really close to taking out the uh, Brockfire Hunter there, but it's not going to be enough. Um, and then Battering Ram can move to the front and take some hits there. But yeah, we're basically losing this pretty heftily. So that's two more ticks. That's another tick. So with a bit of rain on that row, the, uh, the Battering Ram also dies. Spawn and summon what exactly? Okay. A bear. So, the one thing I can do now is put the Karak Marine over here, let him boost the Karabalista, and the Karabalista can hit the Brockfar Hunter and then get that bleeding on there as well. And then I'm going to use... Do I use a single charge already? I'm going to go for it. And put one more volunteer on that back row, there we go. Trying to work out here, because we still have four charges of that. Now we have a crew pocket, if we want to. And then Corrupted Flaminica is just going to be boosting herself by the amount of dead beasts. Which is quite a lot, actually. That was eight for every beast in your graveyard. What are the beasts in the graveyard? Oh yeah, Ooh. Yeah, wow, Nickers and um, Roach, of course. Um, so next up is going to be Voltest Sprite. Uh, so Voltest Sprite goes over here. Uh, I'm going to just take out the uh, the Brockfar Hunter there. Um, that is going to be enough. And then I'm going to use the Leader Ability twice. Um, there's not much point in not doing this. I'm going to have to use the Caraballista in between. I could kill the little Hofru there, but I'm not going to. Uh, so let's put that on the Corrupted Flaminica. Use the Leader Ability again. And there we get Voltest Sprite again. We could do that two more times, just to get it going, um, and I think there's no point in delaying that. So there we go, and there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, that kind of goal is equal again, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, we get Vess in return. Vess is going to take out one of the volunteers, I suppose. Yep, there we go. Nothing to scoff at. Um, and I still have a lot of winches in my uh, in my hand. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to use one of the winches on the Caraballista. That's going to reduce its cooldown back to zero. And I can take down another bit of health on the Corrupted Flaminica. So for now, we're still in the game. I didn't totally didn't expect that. I get another Savage Bear now with two charges. Oh, three charges. That is something. Uh, but that's not going to change too much. Now, I can do Voltest Sprite again. And then use the winch on Voltest Sprite to use that once more. There we go. So that's why I told you guys that Voltest Sprite is basically the best card in this deck. Um, I'm going to be able to use it one more time. Um, oh yeah, Crow Messenger is going to be another 8. Uh, but I don't want to res kill that bear again, because otherwise I'm just creating more problems for myself. Um, let's do siege support. Although I really don't need siege support to... You know what? I am I am going to. So let's just reduce the uh -oh. cooldown of the uh, full test sprite. And then use that once more, uh, maybe over there in the back. So we're still one point ahead. I don't think it's going to be enough, but yeah, boost self by every beast. I should have expected that. 
I should have expected that, but I think we're just missing... I think we're missing a single... No, two points. That was really close, though. If I would have focused on killing beasts, that would have been better. I would have probably won, but that was really close. That was really close. I thought I was going to lose that for sure. That was a cool match. So next up we have Shield Wall. So um, I think we're pretty much good against Shield Wall. Because we can dish out as much damage as they can do. So we do start with Siege. All they did that, the starting hand is not ideal, but we do get Raffid's Vengeance there. Um, usually I also don't go for Carbalista in the first round and Karak Frigate is a little better there. Okay, so that seems like we're going to be going into a first round on the back row with, uh, with Raffid's Vengeance. Uh, I'm going to be needing that winch, so I'm going to take out the other reinforced Ballista here. Yeah, I think that's fine. There's not many options for... Well, there are. They could definitely just nuke it from orbit. Um, I'm going to start with Rat of its Royal Guards, uh, regardless. So let's do that first. Um, I don't really need to shield it. I don't think that's necessary. And we get the Centurion Envoy first. I can dish out a little bit of damage on that. Um, and then get the zeal going afterwards and shield Vess. And Vess is then going to be good for uh, Raffid's Vengeance. And I'm going to use Raffid's Vengeance to get... Maybe the Centurion Envoy. Centurion Envoy or the Karak Frigate, but I think the Karak Frigate might be overdoing it a little bit. Okay, no Witchers though, so that was just four points. Regardless, Raffid's Vengeance gets zealed. Uh, we can use Raffid's Vengeance to get the Garak Frigate over there. And then protect um, Raffid's Vengeance with a little bit more juice. Yeah, a bit more armor. That's going to be fine. It might not seem that I have a soldier to put right next to the Karak Frigate, but I will with Amphibious Assault, so that is fine. They do get to set up their deck quite nicely there. But uh, can't do any cavalry right next to it, so I think they're kind of wasting cards now. Because uh, I'm definitely in, a, in the advantage here. So let's put Amphibious Assault down with... Or the Correct Marine. Correct Marine is usually better, but... Let's just use the Correct Marine and boost the Frigate. The Marine boosts the Frigates. That just looks really nicely. And that's going to be a pass. There we go, we get the pass, um, which means that we start the next round with nine cards. So we can do basically the same thing as we did before. Get rid of it down, and then use the Centurion Envoy to get another good card on top of our deck. Basically setting us up for later. Amphibious Assault is really good. Um, and we get John Natalis, so I can get rid of the Winch. And maybe even the Siege Support. Hmm. Okay. Could have used the siege support to get um, something else going. So we still have Raldavid and Hanselt in deck. So what I'm definitely gonna do is just entry an envoy and get huh, reinforced ballista. Then I suppose it's not the best thing that it could have been. And I can get rid of it out of the deck with. Ooh, wow. That is wasting your Donimir, my good man, because I am just gonna pass right now. But they can actually play um, Radovid on top of that now. Because they still have two cards if you play Radovid behind the Defender. Um, which is not something you can do with Amphibious Assault. Okay, what then, Winch? Okay, Boiling Oil. Fine by me, less removal for me to deal with. Shield Wall is gonna be quite annoying. But non not unsurpassable. There's a lot of shields going though. Okay, so that's the Defender goal, interestingly enough. If we can get Hanseld and Radovid out, that would be ideal, but chances are slim at the moment. You also need to be careful. I think I can get rid of the Siege Ladder. That's a winch. I don't need a winch. That's a Siege support. There we get Radovid, okay. It's better than not getting... Well, it's, it's not better than Hanseld, but Hanseld would have been even better. It's not the ideal setup, but it's as good as it's going to get. Uh, we can't do anything against that just yet. Probably something I could lock, but they can just shield wall it again, which is uh, 
not something I want to try here. Um, yeah, let's put Bildemir down. I mean, they could play this smart and get um, Immortals in the back, but Immortals doesn't work in the back. Yeah, right. So Immortals really doesn't work in the back. So they're removing my shield, um, which is fine. Now I'm hesitating whether to use Radovid now, because um, I can use Radovid now and give me extra charges, guaranteed, because the defender will not go, well, will go in a single turn, but they won't be able to do anything else. I think it's probably safer to now use Siege. Although Siege is not going to generate any points, but it is safer for another turn. So yeah, let's just do it like this. And then we get Amphibious Assault. And we get Immortals on the melee row. I am actually going to take that out. Um, that is the unit I'm going to lock, because otherwise we're going to be here for a while. So Margarita locking that Immortals. Because there's a lot of engine potential on the board right now. And then we get Siri Dash, which is probably going to get a shield. Interesting. Very interesting deck there. Uh, so nothing on the ranged row just uh, yet. Um, so next up is Reinforced Ballista in the back. We get some more Siege Engines down and the next one is also going to be a, a Reinforced Ballista. I'm probably going to be putting the, um, the Volta Sprites. I need to put it somewhere else. I'm going to be running out of space in a minute. Okay, Griffin Witcher Adept, so more shields, which is still fine. I can now use the Yelder Reinforced Ballista. Uh, do Bombardment, that takes out the shield on um, Windhalm. Uh, I can use Battering Ram. And I can use the... Um, yeah, the, the, the Ballista on whatever I want. Probably Siri Dash to just get that down as quickly as possible. So Siri Dash gets another shield, obviously. There's two more turns on that. So meaning that at the end of their next turn, they're going to be getting that. So there's another Witcher with a shield. It's going to be Keldar. There is a lot of stuff going around there. But I can take out every volunteer, uh, well, the, the, the Witcher adept that that creates. So that is fine. Um, the only problem is, of course, Siri Dash and the fact that they're already quite ahead. Um, so John Natal is into reinforcements I think so that's another warfare card so I need to be careful about that so reinforced reinforced and then we can just do John Natalis into reinforcements into another reinforced ballista and that's gonna cool down the other ones um, and I'm gonna be laying that out down on Siri dash but yeah that's not gonna help out so let's just use a uh, Keldar, although I can take out the Griffin Witcher Adept cycle here as well. So let's do that and end it there. Then next up we're going to be putting Radovid next to Dolomir, putting Full Test Sprite in between that. Okay, and that one gets the shield now. The shield is actually lingering on that one uh, Adept. Um, and we get that and they get an extra card. Okay. Uh, so Radovid. Going over there. Not test my moving patience. the battering ram back and then just killing the Witcher student. Um, and I can also kill one of the adepts with this, I think. Uh, not just yet, actually. Not just yet. So I'm going to keep it like this. So just taking out a few shields. We're not out of the woodworks just yet, but it is getting better. So right now we have eight cards on the back row, so ex any extra volunteers will not work. Um, but I want to get as many cooldown cards on that row so I can benefit from that the most. So another damn sorceress is going to take out some shields, I'm assuming. Although they haven't been using that ability just yet. Um, and I'm taking out Keldar pretty efficiently here. So we'll see. We'll see. This will be getting down to the wire. I don't have a good card to pull. I could use the Siege support, just taking down another cooldown. Uh, I'm gonna do Radovid here. 
Um, then putting Foltest Sprite down. Like this. Then doing that in the middle. Um, with that, I can actually take out the Griffin Witcher Adapt that has been cooled down at the moment. Um, I'm going to use Stockpile once over here. That's that. I can use the Battering Ram and that's going to hit the damn Sorceress. Now I can take out both the Witcher Adept and the student in the back. Do that one more time. Like that. And then we can use Full Test Pride again. Like... Wait. I can hit this one, then Full Test Pride it, and then kill it with the remaining two charges. There we go. All the Griffin Witcher's Adepts are gone. Just in time. <laughs> that was really close. Damn. Um, and the defender is still alive, which is also good. I'm wasting my final um, siege engine here, but um, it's not going to be that bad. Um, Amphibious Assault could actually go onto the siege support, which is also going to be good. So we get. That's actually absolutely fine. Um, because we get uh, Prince Anseus. I would have thought that they would use Prince Anseus to get the... Uh... Oh, but they don't have any shield walls left. Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, so now, I can... I think I can use the Reinforced Ballista to kill Keldar. So, that engine needs to die. Um, so I was going to use... Stockpile once. I'm not going to get any uh, volunteers, but that's just worth it. Um, Kaldar, and then hit both Kaldar and the students. Then Amphibious Assault onto the correct Marines, because it's more points. Like this, and then boost John Natalis, and then I can use the remaining charges to just hit whatever I want, because that just really doesn't matter anymore. And then the next turn I'm going to have to be really quick to use all my charges. Because <laughs> I still have two leader ability charges. Yeah, there we go. They uh, they pass, so there we go. Wow, I like this deck. Cooldown Kings is just the best. Look at that. We even had, I think we had, so we had two more charges. So that was another Foltest Sprite for four. And then two times three trebuchets. Is another six, so that was another 10 points just on the leader ability alone. So, uh, yeah, very, very nice, uh, nice deck indeed. And the reason why this works so well is just because Milva is gone. So, Milva is a lot less prevalent right now just because of the fact that it's been she's been nerfed a little bit, so her order ability damage went down from uh, two to one, which means that there's no um, she's not that oppressive against engine uh, decks like this one. And just this deck is just really good. And I was really glad that I added Donimir because he came in uh, handy a few times. Um, the one thing that it might be lacking a little bit right now is the consistency. So we do have a few tutor cards. We have Amphibious Assault and, and Rapid Vengeance for Tinning. But still, you see that we regularly don't get the cards that we want. Because if we had Hanseled in that final match, it would have been even wilder. Because the amount of cooldown ticks we had there was just insane. Um, so Hanseld would have been benefiting from all of that. We, we would have gotten another card on the field as well. So uh, this is the Cooldown Kings deck. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Because this is already the end of the episode, sadly. But uh, I had a lot of fun with this deck. And I think I might actually do another Northern Realms deck after this. Um, I'm going to see if I put in something else in between. But there's a really meme uh, Northern Realms deck that I just want to show off. It's not the best deck in the world. But uh, definitely not compared to this. Because this was a... A really competitive deck. Uh, but yeah, the next one might be a bit more meme -y. So uh, keep an eye out for that. In other words, you also can check out the deck again in the uh, the description down below using the link to the Play Gwent website. Import it to your own deck and don't forget to upvote it there. Um, is there anything else I need to say? No. I just want to thank you guys enormously for watching and for your continued support because it's been uh, really appreciated. Um, so thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.